welcome. We are, are Estelle and Kirsten from Adrian Access. Access is an international digital rights uh, organization. And uh, ADRI is a network of 33 uh, civil rights organizations from all over Europe. And the goal of our two organizations is to defend and promote uh, civil rights in the digital environment. So the title of our presentation tonight is Privacy, Virtually Careless and Versus Really Careful. In the following image, we want to look at the different reaction of people face with a violation of their right to privacy, both online and offline. So um, in the digital environment, uh, we uh, give away a hell lot of uh, personal information. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, but what I think we all want is to remain in control a maximum of our, our personal data and our communications. So when we browse online, and especially on our smartphone, um, companies are frequently able to access um, our photo, our personal data, our location. As you can see in the image display on the screen right now, this is a typical request to access by an app on your smartphone. Yes, so, but how do we react um, in real life? Uh, just one month ago, uh, the Danish Consumer Council did a very nice experiment in a bakery and so before people could go and buy their bread, they asked people to hand over their personal information. So for example, they asked for their email addresses, phone numbers, and so on. So the question here is, when you face to such request in your personal life, how do you react? How are you ready to share your personal information? So now we're gonna show you the reaction of most of the people through the Danish study. This applies to the offline world. So yeah, the first person who walked into uh, this bakery uh, was asked for his phone number in order to be able to continue his shopping, basically. And uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, he looks rather irritated and without a second of hesitation, he responded straight away, uh, no way, I refuse. So the reaction of the second customer was a little bit different. <laughs> He basically decided that if he had to give his phone number, then he would rather ask also the phone number of the ladies in front of him. A little bit more pragmatic. So we don't know if a relation was born from this dial to relation. So yeah, and this person uh, was asked uh, for access to her address book. Uh, specifically, uh, they asked for her mom's uh, phone number. And uh, yeah, as you can see, she looks rather offended by this question and uh, just the idea to hand over her this personal information to a complete uh, stranger. And the last, the last customer was asked to give her location data. That was the last piece of information that you needed to give in order to get your bread. So this person was asked to state where she was the day before at 8 p.m. And I think you can see her reaction. Let, let her completely speechless and she's actually not replying at all in the video. So yeah, now to the online world. I'm sure you know all this uh, screen. Uh, it's uh, an app, uh, when you want to install an app, app it's uh, asking for uh, permissions to access uh, your data. Uh, for example, the flashlight app that turns your mobile phone into a torch uh, wants to track your location data and uh, yeah. Uh, you also have the example of the Facebook Messenger application, but that's not the only one. You also have all the games, the famous game like Angry Birds, who wants to access your information, your photo, etc. But it's not only accessing, but it's also having the right to edit and delete your information, which is much more important. So yeah, I think this is very scary, and it gets even worse when you know that uh, intelligence agencies uh, like the NSA, as uh, Sebastian just said, uh, target specifically these apps in order to collect all sorts of data on us, including our age, uh, uh, sexual orientation, and location. So uh, why do we care less in the online world, and uh, what do we do? So basically there is several answers to this, mm, to this question. First of all, we have to raise more awareness on this issue. And we have, to, mm, we have to explain that our civil rights, our right to privacy apply the same way online and offline. And we need to take back control of our data online and offline. So you can also try to play a tiny part in this and get control over your data on a personal level. Uh, there's a couple of uh, privacy uh, uh, friendly uh, yeah, apps uh, in order to securely communicate. Uh, a couple of them are here. Um, Estelle will talk about some others. 
yeah, as you can see, there is a pretty large number of them. Um, you have, for example, Threema, which is a secure direct messenger. You have Text Secure and Silent Circle, who encrypts your text message. You also have uh, the Guardian project that developed uh, some app that allows you to browse online securely. And yeah, because 20 seconds are just not sufficient at all to uh, present or give a full list of all the apps that you can use in order to se secure your communications, the Electronic Frontier Foundation has done a very nice scorecard online. Uh, yeah, we can give you the link later, but uh, it gives a nice list of all the tools that you can use. So to conclude, there is uh, no single solution to solve the problem of all the, viol the violation of privacy that happens online, but there is here different things that you could do. First, you could start using more privacy-friendly tools. You could call on your government to end mass surveillance, and you can also um, ask publicly to support stronger data protection rules in Europe. Yeah, so that's already about it from us. Uh, we wanted to thank the Danish Consumer Council because we really liked their video and it was a great experiment. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, and for the last slide, now we give the floor to you. You have 20 seconds to ask us all the questions you want about this presentation. Uh, or you can join us to the bar after to continue ten, the discussion. Nine, eight. Okay. Anyone? Yeah, let's have a beer. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you.